This is a Disneyland original little long playing record, and I am your story reader. I am going to begin now to read the story of Treasure Island. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when Tinkerbell rings her little bells like this. Let's begin now. Jim Hawkins' great adventure began one day at the Admiral Benbow Inn in England. A man named Billy Bones, who did not have long to live, had given Jim a treasure map. Jim showed it to his good friends, Doctor Livesey and Squire Trelawney. The treasure was buried on an island. Jim and his friends decided to search for it. In the seaport town of Bristol, the squire hired Captain Smollett. The captain would undertake the sea voyage in his ship, the Hispaniola. The squire also hired a cook named Long John Silver. Long John, who had spent many years at sea, brought some of his friends to join the crew. Nobody knew it, but Long John and his friends were pirates. They wanted the treasure themselves. <coughs> The ship set sail from Bristol Harbour. For many days, things went smoothly. One day, Jim was hungry. He climbed into a barrel to get himself an apple. Hidden from sight, he heard Long John and the pirates plotting to take over the ship. Jim told the squire, the doctor, and Captain Smollett what he had heard. They asked him to keep an eye on Long John, who had taken a liking to Jim, and to warn them when the pirates were going to strike. Shortly afterward, the island was sighted. Long John, Jim, and some of the pirates got into a boat to tow the ship into the bay. The pirates left on board decided to mutiny. While Captain Smollett was getting things under control, Long John made Jim his prisoner. He told the captain he would hold Jim until he got the map. While the pirates were beaching the boat, Jim escaped. He ran into the island forest, where they could not find him. In the woods, Jim met Ben Gunn, an old man the pirates had left on the island years ago. Ben was glad to have someone to talk to. He told Jim all about his rowboat, his cave, and the food he ate to survive. <coughs> Captain Smollett noticed a stockade on the island. And decided it would be a good defence against the pirates. He left two men to guard the pirates on the ship, and set out for the fort. Jim joined his friends there. On the ship, the pirates overpowered the guards and took over. Long John returned. He and the pirates made plans to attack the stockade. Long John wanted to bargain with Captain Smollett to get the map. The captain refused, so Long John and the pirates attacked. The action was fast and furious. Jim was busy loading the muskets, but finally the pirates retreated. The people at the stockade feared the ship's cannon might be used against them. If someone cut the ship's mooring lines, thought Jim, the ship would run aground. Her cannon would be useless. When it was dark. He took Ben's boat and rowed out to the ship. He cut the lines, but the rowboat floated away. He had to climb aboard. The pirate on guard saw him and chased him up into the rigging. He threw a knife and hit Jim in the arm. Jim was badly hurt, but managed to shoot the pirate and climb down to the deck. The ship ran aground. Jim staggered back to the fort. Only to be captured by the pirates, Long John was concerned over Jim's injuries. Under a flag of truce, he went to get the doctor. While Doctor Livesey bandaged Jim's arm, Long John told them he had the map. He wanted to bargain, though. He would protect Jim from the pirates if the doctor would help him when they were back in England. The doctor agreed. <coughs> The pirates found the spot where the treasure was supposed to be. They dug a deep hole, but the treasure was gone. They thought Long John had stolen it. 
The pirates attacked Long John. Doctor Livesey, Squire Trelawney, and their friends got into the fight too. Soon, Long John was the only pirate left. It turned out that the treasure was in Ben Gunn's cave. Without telling anyone, he had dug it up himself and hidden it. Captain Smollett told the squire and Jim to take Long John back to the ship as a prisoner. He would be going back to England, perhaps to die. But Long John had saved Jim's life. He had to help him. At the beach, he saw his chance. He pushed the rowboat into the water so that Long John could row toward the open sea alone. Goodbye, matey. Good luck to ye," said the old pirate in farewell. A life on the ocean wave, a home on the rolling deep, where the scattered waters rave and the winds their revels keep. Like an eagle caged, I pine on the dull, unchanging shore. Who、oh, give me the flashing brine, the spray and the tempest roar? A life on the ocean wave, a home on the rolling deep, where the scattered waters rave and the winds their revels keep. The winds, the winds. The winds, their revels keep. The winds, the winds, the winds, their revels keep. A life on the ocean wave, a home on the rolling deep, where the scattered waters rave and the winds, their revels keep. Once more on the deck I stand of my own swift gliding craft. Set sail, farewell to the land. The gale follows far abaft. A life on the ocean wave, a home on the rolling deep, where the scattered waters rave and the winds their revels keep. The winds. The winds, the winds, their revels keep. The winds, the winds, the winds, their revels keep. We shoot through the sparkling foam like an ocean bird set free, like an ocean bird our home we'll find far out on the sea. A life on the ocean wave, a home on the rolling deep, where the scattered waters rave and the winds their revels keep. The winds, the winds, the winds their revels keep. The winds, the winds, the winds their revels.